Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Pujapad, Bhaktivedanta Bhagavat Maharaj, Pudapad, Bhaktivedanta Asha Maharaj, and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vancha So now, for four days, we have been discussing the glories first of Radhanam, the holy name of Radhika. Then we discussed Radhadham, the glories of Vrindavan Dham. Then on Lalita Saptani, the day of Radhika Saki, Lalita, we discussed the glories of Radhika's Sakis of Parikars. So Nam, Dham, Parikar. This morning we discussed the Radha Tattva in relation to Radhika's brain. And this evening to 
complete our festival, we only want to discuss Leela. <laughs> Leela, the pastimes, the expression of the love in the heart of Radha Krishna is manifest in their divine transcendental play. Sri Akanta Akanta Paramapurusha Kalpatarabhu Drumabhu Visk Chintamai Mai Gana Mayin Tayam Amritam Katha Ganam Natyam Gamanam Hiyabhangsi Priyasakhi Chidanandam Jyoti Param Apitadaswaryam Apicha In the Brahma Samhita it is said Oh, beyond this Devi Dham, this material world, beyond Mahesh Dham, the abode of Lord Shiva, beyond Vaikuntha Dham of Lord Narayan, there is Galok Vrindavan. And that place, Sya Kanta Kanta Parvapuja. In each Vaikuntha planet, there is one Lakshmi. But in Braja, Every single gopi, millions and millions of gopis, they're all superior to Lakshmi. In the mm, Vaikuntha planets, there may be a desire tree, but in Vrindavan, every blade of grass, every small shrub and creeper is even more powerful desire, wish fulfilling plant. Every cow there is Kamadhenu. The water there is Amrita. Every step is a dance and every word is a song. That place is not illuminated by light. It is only illuminated by brain. And everything in that divine realm of Goloka Vrindavan is Aswadhyaya. Relishable. Spiritually relishable. Full of nectar. See, Krishna manifests himself and his dham, his parikas, all on this earth in Brajamanta. Don't think that Krishna <coughs> comes from Galok here. No, he's always here in Braja. Only sometimes his aprakas is not manifest there. And once in a day of Brahma, then he becomes visible to the eyes of everyone. But Krishna is always in Vrindavan, even today. Those who do bhajan in Vrindavan can realize it. So Rupa Goswami Pada said, Tishtan Brajei Tadadurahi Janam Gami Kalam Nayetakil Ittu Padesha Saram The essence of all advice is to engage oneself in hearing, chanting and remembering the divine name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Sri Krishna gradually being completely absorbed, reside in the branch, and be under the guidance of the Anuragi Jan. Braj Rasik Vaishnavas were deeply attached to the service of Srimati Radhika. Then one can realize that Sri Krishna <coughs> is always, always present in Vrindavan Dham. That is his Nitya Bhumi. When Sri Krishna manifests his pastimes here, he has a Balya Lila, childhood pastimes, in which the Vatsalyuras, the love of his mother, is prominent. Then he has the Pauganda Lila, <coughs> in which the love of his friends is prominent. But then comes his Kishwa Lila, in which the love of the gopis is prominent. And out of all the Braja gopis, Srimati Radhika, she is Vrindavanishri. Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Dayate Gokula Tarni Mandala Mayate. All the Tarnis, the young girls of Raja, she is supreme. Damadara Rati Vardana Deshe. Damadara Rati Vardana Deshe means. So Dhamadha Rati Vardana Vashi means that the Sringar, all the ornaments, the clothing of Radhika from head to toe is so beautiful, very fine. And the beauty of her body is peeping through her cross, little, very attractive. Though Madhya Shoda, 
in Krishna's Dalya Lila, she had to collect all the robes in Braja for many hours and tie them all together. And after many hours of trying to bind Krishna, and she was sweating, and Krishna saw her hard endeavor, then Krishna felt sorry for her. So his Aishwarya Shakti disappeared, and Madhya Shoda bound Krishna. But Damodara Rati Vardana Veshi. As soon as Krishna sees the beauty of Radhika peeping out through her beautiful clothing and ornaments, he's bound in one second. So Damodara Rati Vardana Veshi. Hari Nishkuta Vrindavi Pineshi. Nishkut means if there's a king, he has a palace. And the palace has so many buildings or rabbis, but in the middle of the palace there's a secret garden. And no man can go there, only his queens can go there. And he enjoys in that pleasure garden, secret pleasure garden in his palace. That is called Nishkut. So, in Brajananda, Hari Nishkuta Brinda. The forest of Vrindavan is like Krishna's Nishkut, where he goes to meet the Pineshi, with the Isha, the queen there, the queen of that secret garden of Vrindavan is <coughs> only Radhika. So Rupa Goswami is saying, Radhe Jai Jai Mahatmagai. When Krishna comes to his Kisho age, <coughs> at that time, he cannot tolerate separation any longer from Radhika and the gopis. He wants to meet with them, but there was no opportunity. But finally, on the full moon night of the Shardia season, Bhagavan Apitara Tri, Shardut Fulla Malika, Vikshorantam Manas Chakri, Yogamaya Mupasita. Though he is Bhagavan, Bhagavan, Api, though he is Bhagavan, who is supposed to be Atmaram, self-satisfied. But Krishna has a desire. When he saw the beautiful flowers blossoming in the moonlight, but through the Malika, the jasmine flowers illuminated by the moon, then Krishna's heart, Vikshorantam Manastriti, he wanted to enjoy Raman, loving pastimes. So, Yoga Maya, Upasritaha, he took shelter of Yoga Maya. It means that when he played his flute by Yoga Maya, no one could hear the flute. Except for Braj Gopis. So Yoga Maya arranged it. And the Braj Gopis ran away from their homes. But no one could stop them. Why? Because Yoga Maya arranged a copy, a clone of the Gopis to stay in their homes. So their family members thought that they were still there. So Yoga Maya Mupasrita. But another deeper meaning is Yoga Maya Pashrita. When Sri Krishna took his flute to his lips at Bangsiva and closed his eyes, he deeply meditated on Shimati Radharani. Hmm? You know, there's a story about uh, Dronacharya was training the Pandavas how, how to shoot. So he was with his uh, shooting archery students and he said, Oh, Aim your arrow at the bird in the tree. So then one student took his bow. He said, what do you see? I see the tree. I see the bird. I'll sit down. Another one. Aim. Tell me what do you see? I see the hill. I see the tree. Then sit down. Then he asked Arjun. Aim. What do you see? I only see the eye of the bird. Huh? Focused. One point. In the same way, when see Krishna went to Bhansi Bhatt, and took his foot and closed his eyes. His hairs were standing on end. He was trembling and tears were flowing from his eyes and he only saw the face of Shinati Radhika. And that Bhavin's heart came out in the form of his foot song and ignited the anurag in Braj Gopi's heart. They became mad and all came running there. So Yoga Maya Mupashita means Yoga means Samyoga Rasa, the Rasa of Union, that is Yoga. And Maya means Varyapta, the fullest extent. So Yoga Maya Upashrita means Krishna in his heart took full shelter of Yoga Maya, that is the name of Radha. 
He took full shelter of that heroine who alone can fulfill his desire for Sringa Rasa to the fullest extent. So, as you know, Braj Gopis came and a very beautiful Rasa Lila took place. Evam Parisvanga Uthongi Antan Evam Parisvanga Karabi Mrsta Snigdekshta Dukdhama Vilasa Hasari Rame Rame Sho Braja Sundari Veer Yathava Kaswa Pratibimba Vip Brahmaha Shukadev Goswami Pad said, in that rasa dance, then Sri Krishna was embracing the Braja Gopis. Evam Parisvanga, very tightly embracing them. Karabim Rista. Putting it, that means putting his arm over the shoulder of Radharani like this. And as the music was playing, he was doing the tal of the Madanga on the part of Radhika like this. Eram Parisvan Karabim Rista. Sneak dead and Radhika looked at him. Sneak dead. Krishna glanced very fresh. Ramay Ramay Show Brajasundri Bhi. Ramay, enjoying loving pastimes, who? Ramesh. Krishna is Ramesh. Isha means Lord. And Rama means, remember, if the name Rama appears in relation to Vrindavan, Rukmini Dwarapatmantu, Radhe Vrindavan Evane. The rule is that it means Radhika. So Krishna is Ramesh, the Lord of Radhika. No, Ramesh means whose Lord is Radhika. Actually, like Gopinath. Gopina does not mean Lord of the Gopis, it means whose Lord is a Gopi. Hmm? Radhika controls him. And just by the movement of her eyebrow, by her glance, she can make Krishna sit down, stand up, sit down. <laughs> so Ramay Ramay Shok, Braja Sundari Veer, Yathava Kaswa Patibhimba Virprana, they began to play like a child plays with his own reflection in a mirror. Yathavaka Swapratibhimba, his own reflection, Swapratibhimba, Vibrama. Krishna is bewildered, playing, dancing with gopis, like a child playing with his own reflection in the mirror. It has many meanings. Every word of Shukadeva Swami is just dripping with the delicious Amrita, transcendental or Samrita. Yitabhaka Swapratibhimba Vibrama means that if a man goes to a woman and then he touches her, she will call the police. Right? <laughs> <laughs> because it should not be done. Hmm? But if you touch your own mirror, your own reflection in the mirror, this is you. Hmm? So there's no problem. There's no, there cannot be any loss there. So in the meeting with, of Krishna and the gopis, they are his own Ladini Shakti. They are non different from him. So don't think that there's any calm, any lust, or even any touch of the duality of material existence in this lila. It is the Advaya Gyan Parata. It can only be realized in Samadhi, in trance, by those who have transcended the dualities of this world. So, like a child playing with his reflection in the mirror, it means also that as Krishna was dancing, Radhika was dancing. Then Radhika was dancing, and she was dancing, Krishna was dancing. In this way, they're having a competition. So, Pratibhimba Vibhrava. It also means that if you have one mirror here, your reflection is there. If you put another mirror there, your reflection is there. If you have so many mirrors, you'll have so many reflections. So, for as many gopis there were in the Ras Lila, there were that many forms of Krishna dancing and playing with each gopi. Yathava Kaswa Pratibhimba Vibhrava. Another meaning. This morning we discussed Paraspara Vasiba Atishai. Very often, Radhika and Gopis, they will be quite contrary to Krishna. They do the opposite of what he wants, due to their contrariness, their crook the crooked nature of their love. But when they come in Anurag, then Krishna is controlled by Virj Gopis and Gopis are controlled by Krishna. Paraspara Vasiba Atishai. At that time, whatever Krishna, whatever Radhika feels, oh, Krishna should do, Krishna is automatically doing that. Whatever gives Radhika happiness, Krishna is doing that, and whatever Krishna does gives Radhika happiness. They are completely prasparavashiva, controlling each other. 
जय जय प्यारो करे सोही मोही पारे भावे मोही जोही सोई कारे प्यारी ओ सखी whatever krishna does it is pleasing to me and whatever is pleasing to me krishna does this is brother basha so yatha bakaswa pratibimb vipruma very beautiful oh, another meaning what meaning are we on that seven yatha bakaswa pratibimb vipruma means that without a mirror you cannot know whether you're beautiful or not right if you have a mirror then you can look and see whether you're beautiful or not so in the same way the gopis are like a mirror for krishna because krishna he has decorated himself so nicely with the banamala with vijayanti mala with the tulsi mala kunta mala we discussed the different malas he's wearing in the rasalila with his big or feather and so many ornaments and paintings on his face and body in sandalwood paste and kasturi he looks so beautiful but is he really beautiful only when he comes in front of the gopi and the gopi reacts and by the udipana the stimulation of krishna's beauty she's trembling her hair is standing on end then krishna can know by the gopi's response to his beauty oh it's true i am beautiful <laughs> <laughs> so yatha bakaswa pratibindu vibrama hmm? yeah? yeah you can think you are very beautiful but when others see you then you then you then you start then you find out <laughs> <laughs> So in this way, gopis are like the mirror Krishna. So the Rasalila went on, and how they feel such closeness. Na so Ramana na ma Ramani, do we manu manu baba peeshla jani? Radhika said, I am not the beloved, and he is not my lover. But Cupid has taken our hearts and melted them and mixed them together. So after such a union, when the Rasalila is over and in the morning, Krishna has to return to Nanda Gaon. and radhika has to return to yavan then though the separation before the rasvila was very difficult to bear but the separation after that very intimate union of hearts is completely intolerable completely intolerable ah oh, alas alas radhika gopis in their separation now they have in spurtis of krishna they sometimes see krishna in their heart sometimes they see krishna before them but then they go to embrace him and he disappears and then their separation becomes double and then they become confused oh i am becoming mad i see krishna is with me But then I find out that actually it was a spurt, it was a vision. He was not really there. And then they become so confused that they think that not only is this spurt, the vision of Krishna they have, that they didn't meet with Krishna, it was just a spurt. But they begin to doubt themselves: Did I ever even go and meet with Krishna in the Ras Lila? Oh, that was also just a spurt. They become so confused at last. I never met with him ever. This is the separation. Become so high now. Then what comes? You go eat. You know you go eat. Bhama bahu krita, bhama kapulo, falgit brurad apitvin. Alas, but I can hear he's playing the flute, 
And when he plays the flute, he puts his left cheek on his left shoulder like this. And then he takes his flute and places it on his bottom lip. And then he takes his very soft fingers, which are so soft because he never did a day's work in his life. <laughs> because he's spoiled, you know, he's the son of a king. <laughs> so Nanda Maharaj has so many servants, they do all the chores and everything. Krishna, just, he doesn't have to do anything. That's why he's called Miss Chintya. And he has not a worry in the world. So then he takes his soft fingers, Komala and Gulibir, soft fingers, and he places them on the holes of the flute. And then he begins to play. And the gopis are just, ah, oh, she's so bad. She's so bad. Who? That flute. <laughs> <laughs> Their brain is so intense in separation. They become jealous. Radharani, in her mother and love, she becomes jealous of Krishna's flute. This flute is so bad. What is she doing? She thinks she's a princess. <laughs> when she starts singing, she calls all the demigods. Oh, come on, come on. And all the demigods are gathering in the sky. She tells Jumuna River, hey, where are you going? Come back. And Jumuna River is going to this. I'm turning. Frankie, Navisada, Ota, Bahida. The river is flowing in the opposite direction. Huh? Who does she think she is telling everyone what to do? She's even controlling Krishna, telling him what to do. Hmm? She's just there relaxing on her chaise lounge hmm? of his bottom lip. <laughs> <laughs> and then she tells Krishna, give me a massage. And then Krishna's massaging him. <laughs> So bad. <laughs> she has no love, she's ordering it around. She puts so much stress on him. Ari Saki Hari Vainu, Barabayu Yulukta, Givarada Topi, Prakshani Asaki Bi. Hari Salanga, Gitri Giri Dai Napi, Yadikila Kalavainu, Sandito Vakramapa. This flute, color, color venue, very wicked girl. She's very wicked because she puts so much stress on Krishna. Girivara Dara told me, when Krishna lifted Giriraj Govardhan, very heavy, huge mountain he was lifting with his little finger, he stood up straight. But when he holds his flute, he becomes Tribhanga, crooked in three places. So this flute must be heavier than Govardhan. She put in so much stress on the poor boy. This girl is very bad. <laughs> so in this way, Praja Gopis are going mad in separation. But if there's a village festival, if there's a village festival, then there's a chance somehow or other to meet Krishna. Like Nanda and Yashoda will come and they'll talk to Vrishwabhana uh, Maharaj and Kirtida. So Nanda Yashoda will come and Krishna will follow his mother and father and Radharani, on the pretext of following her mother and father, will come also like this. Hmm? Radhika is a little upset with Krishna. So then Krishna comes and he stands in such a way that the shadow of his head and his peacock feather is falling on Radharani's feet. Radharani is looking down out of shyness and she looks and she sees his peacock feather coming like that onto her feet. And then she smiles and Krishna is... <laughs> She accepts me. <laughs> yes, I, no, it's no problem. Jindavan is so sweet, you cannot hold it in. So, so if there's a special festival, then they get a chance to meet. So after the Rasalila, the winter time came. And then after the winter time, after the cold season, then the moon becomes very bright and the Falgun season comes. In Falgun, there's a Krishna Paksh and Super Paksh, the dark fortnight and light fortnight. In the dark fortnight, there's a very nice festival, you know, Shivaratri. What happened in that festival? I'll tell on another day. But in the, in the Shukla Paksh, very amazing. Oh. In the Shukla Paksh, another festival comes that is holy, holy festival on the Purnima, Phagun Purnima. 
So at that time, the evening time came and seeing the beauty of the moon and the beauty of the kumut flowers and knowing that holy is the time for throwing colors and everyone in the village can participate. So then the brass gopis, being filled with pride and intoxication of their beauty, they decorated themselves so wonderfully. And they came out from their houses, not one or two, but thousands and millions of gopis from all over branch streamed out of their houses with great eagerness, meditating on Krishna, and dressed, they're ready, because holy is a war, you know. It's a war. So they're ready for war. They've put on their breastplates of their kanchulis. They've put on their Mm, they've taken up their pitch carries, you know, pitch carry, it's a syringe for spraying the fragrant colored water. They have pitch carries, they have their hand grenades of the flower pollen wrapped in soft lac. So when it's thrown, then it explodes and all the pollen goes everywhere. <laughs> so they have all their weapons, they're all well equipped and they come marching out. Gopis, thousands and millions of gopis from all over branch and they come they all assemble together at the gate of the village and go outside. And just outside the gate of the village, there's the place of the holy carbon fire. You know? Huh? Okay, then you, you are... Yes, you know. <laughs> so, if you live in India, the day before the holy festival, you have to make a bonfire for the burning of holy. Very beautiful. If you come into our ashram in Vrindavan, we do that big bonfire there celebrate this. And you have to take some um, grains, you know, some uh, wheat still on the still on the stem and dip it in the fire and then put it out. And then give, go around and give it to all your friends and embrace them. This is the, the various uh, rituals of the Holy Cup festival on the evening before Holy. So that's a very holy place. Hmm? So all the gopis came out from the gates and they gave pranam to the place of the Holy Kaban fire that, from the previous night. And then there's a huge courtyard area, very long and beautiful, outside the gate there. And gopis came there on one side. And they began to play drums and blow uh, bugles and so many instruments. It made a tremendous noise, you know, just like in the back of Kurukshetra. Right? First one side starts to beat all their drums and play the instruments. Why? To strike fear. It's the heart of the opposing side. So Krishna, Madhu Mangal, Subhal, Sridham, Dham, Vasudham, Arjun, Lavanga, Stoka, Krishna, Madhu Mangal, Vasan, Gopal, Bringa, and other cavalrys. When they heard the sound of the musical instruments of so many gopis ready for war, then they began to tremble. Yeah. But someone who has courage, they talk to themselves to sit. And the boys were saying to themselves, we can defeat them. <laughs> they were reassuring, we can defeat them. But it was more to reassure themselves. Because the, the tremendous sound uh, was quite intimidating. No. <laughs> we are here, we are heroes, we can defeat them. So then Krishna with his coward boys, they came out of the village, through the gate, they gave pranam also at the place of the Holy God bonfire. And then they assembled on the other side of that broad courtyard outside the village. And they assembled in a circular formation. You know, like Chakra Vyuha. They assembled there in a, in a circular formation. So, um, then, Cowboys, they started to play their musical instruments also to show that we also have force. Because that's what happens in the back. You know, in the back, each the first one side plays, yeah. and then the pandavas side plays, and it shatters the hearts of the Gauravas. So the coward boys they begin to play, but Gopis are not afraid, and their phalanx spreads out <laughs> on all sides. There's just so many of them. The coward boys are outnumbered, and the coward boys are looking. 
this is a very dangerous situation. <laughs> so just then, the cowboys thought, we will be successful. Why? Because our emperor, Charles Sonda, Nanda Nanda, is with us. So we must be successful. And they took a throne. And they sat Krishna on a throne. And one cowboy took a jeweled umbrella and held it over the head of Krishna. Another cowboy took a white chama and began to fan him. The gopis were looking. Hmm. You see, the umbrella and the fan, they are the insignia of the emperor. So in the world there can be many kings, but there can only be one emperor. So then the gopis, they took a beautiful asana and Radhika sat down and they took a chatra, an umbrella over the head of Radhika and a, a gopi took a chamra and was running Radhika. Chamra dula bo gabe, eli bo muka chamra. So many times I go slowly spread. Oh, when will I find Radhika with the chamra? What does it mean? He's my Radhika, he's the empress of all Vrindavan. <laughs> That fanning of the chamra is done with so much abhiman, pride. Radhika dasi jadi, hoy abhiman. Sigra melai tabago kulakan silabakno tako said. If someone just has this deep pride, I am dasi of Radhika. Hmm? Then uh, Krishna is will be easily attained. Hmm? It's like it comes free, including free gift. <laughs> well, I'm so <laughs> you know, sometimes you buy cereal and you think there's some like sick inside. <laughs> if someone becomes rather dusty, then Krishna is included in that. Yeah? No need to try for anything else. So, with great Abhiman, one manager is Fanny Radhika. Oh, she is really the, the empress. Hmm? Do you know what Fanny with the Chamber means? Your pran is moving around your body in Vedanta Sutra describes in 72,000 channels called nadis. Right? So this chamara represents, there's so many hairs, the 72,000 nadis of the Manjuris. And they're worshipping Radhika with all their prides. So now there's a dispute will come about because you can't have two the emperors. Only one person can have the jeweled umbrella and the white yaktail with the chamar. So then, at that moment, one old lady, well, middle-aged lady, Arda Brinta, she was Nanda Maharaj has a priest, and that priest has a mother-in-law. And that mother-in-law of Nanda Maharaj's priest has a younger brother. Mm -hmm. And his wife, it was her. Okay, so now you know who she is. <laughs> so, she's a middle-aged woman, and she's part of the Yuta, because the gopis are in Yutas, right? So in a Yuta, there are Sakis, they're all gopis about the same age, all the sakis. But then there's duties, also messengers, uh, and dasis. And they also include like older ladies as well, part of the yuta, and they sometimes help in the pastime. So this middle-aged lady, from the middle, from the midst of Radhika's group, she just burst out like a tempest and went through the no man's land in between the two forces and approach Krishna's side. Why? Because when there's a political mm, disagreement, some contention, then you have to have ambassadors, you have to have envoys, and they go backwards and forwards, and they engage in the mm, various methods of diplomacy. So in Vedic culture, the methods of diplomacy are Sam, Dham, Bait, and Danda. So Sam means the first step is to open the diplomatic channels and by persuasion, by reasoning, then just discuss and try to solve the disputes and make an alliance. You can make a union. 
between the countries. That's done. If that doesn't work, then you have to go to the next thing, down. Down means like bribery. <laughs> Look, let's not fight. I'll give you so much gold and jewels or whatever it is. Or oil these days, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can have the oil, let's not go to war. So then down, you give something and try to pacify the other person. So if that doesn't work, then you have to go on to the next level of diplomacy. That is called bait. Bait means try to create doubt and you know, divide and conquer. Try to create doubt and dissension in the other team. Make the opposing party be suspicious of each other. Make them turn against each other. And in this battle of wits, in this subversion, then no possibilities are off the table. Anything can happen. There can be agents and double agents and triple agents, so no one knows who's che cheating whom. Brachmiru is like this. No one knows who's telling the truth anymore, who, who, or who's on which side. Of course, we know which side on that is on. They're always on radical side. But just be careful of Kundalata, you know, because she's Krishna's cousin. She might be radical group, but she's Krishna's cousin. Sometimes, you know, she's... Be careful with Kundalata. Oh, and the Nishta also. And Nadi Mukhi, don't forget also. Mother Wangal says that she can be tricky. Sometimes she's flip sides. So just be careful. <laughs> but anyway, the others you can trust. So then, if the bait dividing the other side doesn't work, then you have to go to the last method, Danda. The threat of actual war. Hmm? Then, you know, you enter into the negotiation with good faith. But when it's found out that the other person isn't negotiating in good faith, that they've been, they've been dishonorable, then what happens? The Cold War becomes much war. And then Danda begins, actual punishment. So, in this way, Radhika and Hosakis and Krishna and the coward boys, they actually relish playing the lasa through playing, like children playing, in, as if they are kings and queens in the forest of Vrindavan. Very beautiful. And this contention, everything, this is only the nature of love. We discussed yesterday. When love is there, then you don't praise. You tease. So they're teasing each other in these beautiful games. So then Radhika side was the first to make a move, and that Arda Vrita, I'll call her Arda Vrita, you know what I'm talking about? Arda Vrita means middle-aged woman, hmm? related to the priest of Nayana. So she came out of the group of Radhika and approached the group of Sri Krishna. And she was respectful, she bowed her head slightly, and she gave, because she's from Brahmin family, so she gave blessings hmm, to others. And then arriving there, she said, I am Buddhimati Pandita, very intelligent Pandita, female Pandita, she's a Pandita. And because of my great intelligence, I have attained the position of a messenger of Srimati Radhika. And therefore, I have come here to deliver her message to you. So all of you, now please hear my words with rapt attention. When she said that, Madam, I was like, what, what, what did she say? What did she say? Hear, hearing something? What was she talking about? <laughs> and all the cowboys started laughing. <laughs> she was very um, sedate, very stately. She was calm. She said, oh, Krishna. Hmm? Krishna, it seems like your associates are deaf. <laughs> so I will speak to you. Madhu Mangal said, Oh, yes, it seems that you are the Vasha. Vasha, that means the representative of Radharani, means under control of Radharani. Hmm? This is quite appropriate for you. But Vasha also means elephant. So though he was saying, Oh, yes, it's appropriate that you're under the control of Radhika, he was really saying, This middle aged woman, you are like an elephant. <laughs> But then see Krishna, he was very grave, oh, my man, tch, tch, tch. Hmm? and he said, O oh, respected one, freely speak and tell us what is the message from your queen, because he wants to hear what Radhika has to say. So then that messenger, she said, our queen Radhika 
has decreed. And then she held her ears. Oh, Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu. <laughs> In Vedic culture, when you make a mistake, right? You have to hold your ears, right? Yeah. So then she realized, oh, I made a mistake. No, not radical is not decreed. Excuse me. Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu. <laughs> the ministers of Radhika, such as her prime minister, Lalita Saki, <laughs> they have decreed, eh, because it's below the empress to do this, the ministers already. They have decreed that by your accepting the royal umbrella and the white chamar, you have given an insult to our empress. It is an insult. And therefore, we suggest that you should give up this royal insignia at once. <laughs> so then Krishna and the coward boys are laughing. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to give up the insignia. So then Krishna, he said, it is true. On the order of your empress, we will give up our insignia. We'll do it. But according to the Vedas, a king cannot give up his insignia without a fight first, without a battle. So that's it, no more negotiations, bas, whoa! <laughs> huh? Now, the thing is that kings, they often overreact, you know, because they're passionate. And that's why they have to be surrounded by Brahmin ministers who can keep them cool, calm them down, and, and negotiate a more amicable solution to the problem. So Krishna is such a person. In this case, he has a ruthlessly cunning genius, statesman and advisor, <laughs> Madhumanga. <laughs> Madhumanga came to Krishna. He said, your majesty, <laughs> look, just listen to my words. Don't be hasty. Listen to my words and then make up your mind. You see, the thing is this. Look at those women. What caste are they? And they're carrying weapons, right? Which caste can carry weapons? Chatriyas. So if someone from another caste carry, you remember Lord Ramachandra once he came across one uh, Rishi and he had weapons and he was going to punish him because you can't do what is outside of your caste duties, right? So Madam Manga said, look, what caste are they? And they're carrying so many weapons. So they are dishonest. So when you're dealing with a dishonest person, then Krishna, you are very straightforward. So when you're dealing with a dishonest person, you have to be very tricky also. So don't be straightforward to them, with them. I suggest this, <laughs> that you just keep this female messenger here and let me go over there to the other side. <laughs> and I'll speak to them and find out what is their intention and their mood and then I'll come back and let you know what we should do is the next move. Don't be impetuous. Because Krishna, I am a great pandit. I'm such an expert in all of these things. So then that Ardhavrida, the middle-aged lady, she said, Oh, Madhu Mangal, if you were a pandit, then who could be a fool? <laughs> hmm? If you were a pandit, then in this whole world it would be very hard to find a fool. <laughs> so then, <laughs> then that duty, that Arabrita lady, she said to Krishna, your minister is just like you. <laughs> And now, on the pretext of carrying a message, he wants to go to the other side. <laughs> the, the, now, she's giving two insults. Two insults in one. He's just like you means that in your heart you feel fear. Right? And he's so afraid that even at the outset of the battle, before it began, he's trying to tell you, look, you just keep her here. I'm just going to go and I'll negotiate. But he's trying to change sides. Huh? So what is she doing? Dividing. Vaid, Vaid, right? Vaid, right? All the politics comes up in Radha Krishna Lila. <laughs> so she's doing it. So she's doing Vaid. So then, Krishna said, Madhu Mangal said, Look, don't listen to these women. 
They, they have bamyata, but they are abala. They have no strength. What's the use of being contrary? Yeah? But if you don't have any strength to enforce your will. Hmm? Just like Radhika can, can say to Krishna, no, no, no. But Krishna is very strong. So, Madhumanga said, these girls, they are abala. That means no strength. So even though they're contrary, they cannot enforce their will. So what's the use of that? So then that other reader, the messenger of Radharani said, No, don't say that the gopis are abala without strength. They are sabala. Why? Because, I'll let you understand. By knowing one example, you can understand all the things which are similar to that. So by giving the example of Radhika, you will understand the power of all of these gopis. You see, Radhika is a Shastramoy Sharir. Her whole body is made of weapons. Shastramoy Sharir. The Sharir, the body, is Shastramoy. Entire body of Radhika is made of weapons. I said, really? <laughs> she said, yes. First of all, her curling hair is a Pash Astra, a, a noose. You know, sometimes it throw a rope, over, rope net over you and catch you. Her hair is like a net that will catch you. Her eyebrows are like a bow and her glances are like arrows. Hmm? Her earrings are like chakras. Hmm? We were talking yesterday about the big round ears. Her earrings are like chakras. Hmm? And her teeth are like so many sharp vajras, thunderbolt weapons. Her nose is like a sharp knife. Hmm? And in this way, how can you say that Radhika is a abal, weak, when her whole body is a shastramoy sharir? So many weapons. In the, there's a Kaam Yuddha, in loving battle. So when Krishna's hearing this, as he's hearing the description of each part of the beautiful body of Radhika, Krishna starts to strike trembling. So then, Krishna is, composes himself, because he's almost fainting, only thinking of the beauty of of Radhirani. So then, Krishna thought, oh, I'll follow the advice of Madhumangal. So he told that other brother, look, you stay here, my envoy, Madhumangal, is going to go and find out what are the intentions of this Shastra Mahishri here. So then, Madhumangal, he set off from Krishna's side through the no man's land. And then he arrived at the party of Shimati Radhika. The gopis parted like this and there was Radhika, the empress on the throne, with her umbrella and being fanned by the, by the sakis. Madhu Mangal came there. The gopis said, what are you doing here? Hmm? Madhu Mangal said, I have come here to see you dance. What? <laughs> I'll come here to see you dance. So then Madhumango said, Your servant arrived in our camp and said, O oh, Sarvabhoma, O oh, great emperor, our queen wants to meet with you. <laughs> Sarvabhoma, Madhumango was saying that when that messenger arrived there, she called Krishna the emperor and said, Our queen is eager to meet with you. The gopis can't believe their ears. Did she really say that? <laughs> did she do it of her own accord? Or did Radhika, who's very proud and acting all bummy to her contrary, tell her to say that? Or is Madhumango lying? Or this, or that, or this, or that? <laughs> This is called Tarka Vitarka. So, so then Madhumano said, she came and said, O Sarvabhoma, great emperor, our queen wants to meet with you. And then our Sarvabhoma, our Krishna said, I cannot meet with that queen because I have no faith in Milan meeting with her because I have heard a rumor that she has a relation, some attachment to another man. Gopis can't believe that he is. <laughs> what is Madhumangal saying? And therefore, it would be better if you want to make an alliance with our country, you should offer 
one very beautiful girl from your group to be married to one of the uh, men, princes from our kingdom, and they'll be married. So when there's a prince and princess, someone from one side and another, they marry, then those countries are considered to be in an alliance. So Madhu Mangal said this, now all the gopis were restless, and they realized what Madhu Mangal meant when he said, I came here to see you dance. <laughs> because his words have lit a fire. All the gopis are in. Did, did the messenger really say this? Or is he making it up? Did Krishna really say this insult to Radharani or not? How will we respond to it? It's a trap. It's a trap because if, if we'll deny it, no, no, no. Our empress has no love for anyone else. Now she's been forced to be submissive. Right? And declare that I only have love for Krishna. And if she says that it's true, then, then it's, also, it's a big insult. So Madhu Mangal is like sharp as a pin. <laughs> and now you understand the meaning. What are you doing here? I have come to see you dance. <laughs> so by his clever words, now all the parties are all disturbed. What do we do now? What do we do now? So then Vishaka said, look, don't, he's speaking independently. I don't think any of this happened. Krishna never said these things. So just don't take his words seriously. He has some other intention, some other motivation. Mother one said, I am a Brahmin. <laughs> In my presence, even those who are against each other, they become reconciled by my peaceful atmosphere that emanates from him. It's one of the cities of yoga, you know? One of the cities of yoga. That when you have self-control, when you come in the presence of people arguing, they will become peaceful. Huh? He said, I am a person of peace. I bring reconciliation to everyone. My senses are self-controlled. I don't know the meaning of ulterior motives. <laughs> I am living only for the benefit of others, because I am a Brahmin. <laughs> so then, Vishaka Saki said, Oh, good Brahmin, you Benefit should be investigated. And then Vishaka turned to the leader and the Sakis and they all began to confer with each other. To have a discussion. What will we do now? So then, Madhavaru said, look, it looks like a war may come, but I have proposed a path to peace. Just accept the path to peace. You offer one girl from your side, we'll offer one boy, let them be married, and the two sides will be reconciled. This is all I want, peace. So then Radhika said to Madhulanga, because it's very important, before a war takes place, you have to have intelligence, information about the strength of the other side. So Krishna has already heard about Radhika's Shastra Mai Sharia. Now Radhika said, how powerful is your king? Madhu Mangal, tell me, how powerful is your king? <laughs> Madhu Mangal said, Oh Sumuki, beautiful face girl, just the sound, the vibration of his glories and his virtues, which are beyond this material world, makes everyone forget their duties. Huh? Oh, you know? <laughs> it's too late, I'm sorry. Huh? You know, remember when you were younger and you used to want to do this and that, this and that, and then one day you met a devotee, you heard some American guitar and go away out the window. <laughs> yeah. Forget about everything. Just go to a Vrindavan. So Madhu Mangal said, he's so powerful. Just hearing his glories and everyone, they forget all their duties. He attracts all moving and non-moving living entities by the sweet sound of his flute. His beauty is unparalleled and causes everyone's heart to be overwhelmed with intense longing. His pastimes cause everyone to be stunned with ecstasy. And he brings everyone under control by the sweetness of his words. Now you tell me, how powerful is Krishna? My king, my emperor, is so powerful. And very proudly, Madhulanda was glorifying Krishna in front of the gopis. He said, what's more? In front of my Krishna, the biggest, the strongest, the heaviest, the proudest, the fastest, the most intelligent, they all become humble and give up their pride in his presence. And what's more, wherever he goes, everything becomes pervaded with Viparita Kanti. Viparita Kanti means 
Everything changes its nature and becomes the opposite. Wherever he goes, his influence is such that everything becomes the opposite of it was, as it was before. So how powerful he is. When the Lita heard this, she said, Oh Radhika, oh my dear Empress, just look, what Madhu Mangal is saying about Krishna is true. Because a piece of bamboo is deaf and dumb. But as soon as it comes in the association of Krishna, it becomes so talkative. Hmm? Singing so many uh, beautiful songs. And this Brahmin, Madhu Mangal, was born in a great pure Brahmin dynasty of great intelligent sages who always speak with perfect logic and reason. And now he is associating with Krishna. Understand? <laughs> it means that Lalita used Madhu Mangal's own words, that the power of Krishna makes everything come reverse, <laughs> that Madhu Mangal was born in a very pure Brahmin family, always speak the truth with logic and reason, that means that by associating with Krishna, he's become a foolish person who always tells lies and has no logic reason about it. <laughs> Gopis don't say anything directly. Understand? Everything is in the Dwani. In the Dwani. So in this way, Lalita very coolly and expertly insulted Madhu with his own words. <laughs> so then, Lalita Saki whispered in the ears of Radhani. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and she was agreeing with everything. Then the leader openly spoke out in the assembly. She said, All right, we agree to your proposal. We don't have among us gopis, a kanya, an unmarried virgin girl that we can offer, mm -hmm. but we do have a padmini. A padmini means very high class of exquisitely beautiful woman. And this padmini is like a shining deep of similar deep. Mm -hmm. A shining deep of sim similar deep means Sri Lanka. So she's from Sri Lanka, this girl, and she's so beautiful, she's like a shining deep of similar deep. So I think it's very good. We will offer this shining deep of similar deep, and she should actually be married to Krishna himself. And then we'll be at peace and avert the war. And I think that you should not reject her, thinking that she's from a low caste family, being from similar deep. But you should accept her because in the Manuspriti it is said, Vishada pi amritam grayam, ame dhyamma pikaupanam kalchanam, nichada putamam vidyam stri ratnam duskolam pi. Which means the Manuspriti, the law books of mankind. That one should accept nectar even if it's among poison. One should accept gold even if you see there's a stool on the ground but you see a big lump of gold in it. But you should accept gold even from a dirty place. Ni charati uttam vidyam. You should accept uttam vidya, transcendental knowledge, even if it's from a person, from a low caste. And stri ratnam, if a woman is like a ratna, a jewel, having so many good qualities, she should be accepted even if she's from a low family. So don't reject this jewel, this woman is like a jewel. She's all expert in all the female arts. And she's a shining dweeb, deep of similar dweeb. <laughs> so then Madhu Mango, Madhu Mango was thinking, you are all Padminis. So among you, this Padmini should, should also be very qualified. I understand that. Lalita said, no, 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 we are not Padminis. You know, Lakshmi Devi in heaven, she has conquered all the bad meanings in the whole universe. But our Radhika is superior to that Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. And all the Sakis in her group are also superior. So don't compare us to the ordinary bad meanings. But you should accept this bad meaning, the shining deep of similar deep, to be married 
to your Bhupati, secret Bhupati, Sri Krishna. So then, Radhika laughed and she moved the eyebrows. Madhamanga was thinking, who is this shining deep of similar dream? <laughs> who, is, who could it be? Who could it be? I wonder who it could be. Just then, Radhika moved her eyebrows, and there were 50 boys, the Kishore, young boys, and their sons of Nanda Maharaj's priests. By her eyebrows, she moved, and those 50 boys immediately surrounded Madhu Mangal, ripped off all of his clothing, and dressed him in woman's clothing. He discovered that he was going to be the shining dream of Siddhartha <laughs> So now Madam Mangal, he's very dressed, nicely dressed in beautiful red and gold sari with earrings and nose ring and everything. Very ankle bells and bangles. And they're getting him ready for the wedding. <laughs> Radharani said one Brahmin boy, go and tell Krishna of our proposal. So then this Brahmin boy came over from Radharani's side and entered to the camp of Krishna. Krishna is very respectful of Brahmin. Please tell us what is the news. That Brahmin said, in order to negotiate a peace, then our empress has suggested that you, Krishna, should marry one of our associates. The shining deep of sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> and this will make peace amongst us. Krishna was thinking. Must be a trick. Huh? Must be some kind of trap. We cannot trust these people. But then Krishna, he covered his mood and he told that Brahmin boy, Look, I, I cannot ma ma marry this beautiful Padmini girl. But we have a very beautiful young prince. And he will marry that girl. So prepare for a very beautiful wedding and everyone will be united. So then that Brahmin, he went back to Radharani's camp and informed. So then, <coughs> Radharani's army is there. Radharani is in the front, all the Sakis are surrounding and they're coming. They have all their pitch carries and their flower bombs and everything ready. And in the front, in the beautiful Saran ornaments is the shining deep of Sindhu. <laughs> and from this side, Radharani's army is advancing with the, with the bride, beautiful bride. <laughs> In the meantime, Krishna told some mm, uh, ladies who were supporting his side in his group, said, you know that old lady on the bridal came? Dress her up as the bridegroom. <laughs> so now, Radhika's side think they're going to trick Krishna and Krishna's side think they're going to trick Radhika. Radhika's side of dressed Madhu Mangal up as the bridegroom, is the bride. Krishna's side dressed the, the old lady from Radharani's side in a men's clothes with a big turban and a moustache and everything. <laughs> and they put the bridegroom in the front of their group and behind there's Krishna Madhu Mangal's and the sweet arm on all the cowboys, and they have their pitch carries and their sticks, you know, Latimar Holi. In Holi, you also have to have sticks because you do a dance and you uh, kick the sticks and throw them and catch them and fight with them. So they have all their weapons. And now the two armies are advancing on each other into the middle of the Creed of Bumi, the, the playground. And the bride and the groom are approaching each other. A beautiful couple. <laughs> <laughs> so when they came together, then they be all began to sing wedding songs. And some older ladies who were neutral, not on this side or the other, they came and they tied their cloth, they, you know, the bride and bridegroom's cloth have to be tied together in a knot. And so the marriage was, the marriage ceremony was going on. So just then, <clears throat> as the marriage ceremony was going on, then the beautiful Doha eyed gopis in Radharani's groups, they noticed that the bridegroom was very old. Huh? This is an insult. And this bridegroom is very um, rude. He has insulted our Padmini. Hmm? So, prepare for war. 
because if there's an insult, one family to another, then war will go on. So then the Brajan Gopi said, prepare for war. <laughs> just wait a sec, just stop time for a moment. Yeah, take a look. Okay. Just on okay, take it off the post. started dancing and hitting their sticks and throwing and catching them also. But then the pitch carries came out. And the gopis got their pitch carries and <laughs> fired, a, fired a volley of a colored water. So now the colored water was coming from the gopis onto the coward boys and from the coward boys onto the gopis. Everything was becoming red. The ground was becoming red. The trees were becoming red. Even the bumblebees were red. Everyone, everything was becoming red. So there was a chaotic battle going on. So at that time, Krishna himself, being a great hero, he rushed into the midst of the army of the gopis. And the gopis, they were trying to fight with him, but he was pulling their hair, he was pulling their dresses, he was hitting their sticks, and the gopis were falling here and there, here and there, and Krishna was moving so fast, no one could understand how did he enter into the phalanx of gopis. In fact, Krishna was moving so fast, even Krishna could not understand how he was doing this. <laughs> gradually, gradually, he was fighting his way. And sometimes it happens, you know, when there's a big battle, but on the battlefield there are two kings. And everyone's fighting, but gradually they fight through the various soldiers until the two kings become face to face. And when the two kings become face to face, then what happens? All the soldiers stop fighting. And they stand, because it's just down to that. If the king goes down, then one side is won. Right? So no need to fight anymore. So, at that time, Krishna, he burst through all the gopis one after another, and slowly he walked his way through. And Radharani was coming from the other direction. And when the two of them met together, then all the gopis surrounded them on all sides, and they just stopped there. They became like figures in a painting. They became like golden statues with Adbhut Ras. The Ras of astonishing, st astonishment, seeing the beauty of Radha and Krishna come face to face in the holy Yuddha. And then Radha and Krishna with their sticks, they began their duel. <laughs> and as the gopis standing around like golden statues were watching, they felt so many barbs and the barbs were coming out of their mouths in the form of a Sankirtan, very beautiful song. Persia, Persia, Saki, Holy Yudha. friends, whatever they feel, comes out. This is the meaning of Sakhi. So 
So what they're feeling in their heart, they're saying to each other, Pascha, Pascha, Saki, holy Yudam, just see, Radha and Mad- Madhav are manifesting an unprecedented battle. And as they face each other in the midst of all the gopis, this battle is raging and fulfilling all of our desires. All of the their spiritual desires are being fulfilled by this. Danda Dandi Gati Pari Kandit Taratatamo Vyati The first part of the battle is called Danda Dandi. Now Krishna and Rani are fighting with sticks, jumping, sweeping over the top from this side and that side. And as each one does one move, each one knows the counter move. And then does another move. And the other one does a counter move. And then does another move. And the other one counters with great skill. And it's getting faster and faster and faster. And they look like Radhika is like a flash of lightning and Krishna is like a fresh rain cloud. And all gopis are looking with wonder. Pass your pass that Radharani's cloth slips over her eyes and she can't see. Or sometimes Krishna's turban slips down over his eyes and he cannot see because they're moving so fast. So at that time when one of their eyes becomes covered and they can't see, then the other one takes that as an opportunity to give them a good kiss. <laughs> Steal a kiss quickly and then Krishna puts his turban and they keep fighting like this. that spreads out like this. His hands are like the hoods of snakes. And those snakes, you know the nature of snakes? They sneak up on the chakravak birds and go boom and catch them. Hmm? Okay. You know the chakravak bird? It's, it's a golden bird and very round. Pass your pass your Tamal tree, which is being embraced by a swarnalata, a golden creeper. That means as the battle progressed, they became overwhelmed with bhav and embraced each other. When Radhika embraced Krishna, then Krishna became stunned, he could not move, and he was defeated. And all the sakis of Radhika chanted, Radhe 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 and bound him and led him away and took him to Radharani's camp. Now the king has been captured. He's a, he's a captive. <laughs> and he's been taken a hostage by the other side. So Krishna is being taken away by the Sakis. <laughs> now, to the other side. Hmm? In the Prem Patanam, the haven of love, everything come, becomes reversed. That means that defeat is victory. So for Krishna to be defeated, actually, it was the greatest victory of his life. As all the radical and all the sakis lead him away as the hostage. So when they got him there, they sat him down and they did his abhishek. They took a big golden pot full of water with a kasturi, dark kasturi mixed in it, and holy day, Rasiya! And they bathed Krishna completely. Rather than anybody. Cunningly stole Krishna's flute also. So he's, com- he's completely, completely defeated. Pass your pass your pass your pass your pass your pass your 
Why? Because when he, he plays the flute, he has so many gopis names programmed in it. <laughs> he can't call. <laughs> so now she's taking his cell phone, he can't call anyone. <laughs> so then, gopis are saying, and then, Balaram got together, what happened to my brother? He's been defeated. And he was talking with Krishna's friends. So, they sent one a messenger boy to go and negotiate. <laughs> How can we get Krishna back? So one boy came from Balaram's side and came over to Radhika's group. And they had a discussion. And they decided what the, the bail would be to get Krishna out of the jail. <laughs> and they fixed the bail, the ransom money. Yeah, for the kidnapped king. And so then the boy came back, and then the coward boys came. Gopis asked for so many jewels and necklaces and garlands and everything, and they came, and they offered them to the gopis, and gopis accepted them, and said, now you can have your prisoner back. <laughs> and they gave Krishna back. <laughs> so then Krishna went back to his voice, and he was so much in bliss, he began to sing a beautiful song. And that song was so charming. All gopis, they were floating in the ocean of bliss. All the demigods in the sky were floating in the ocean of bliss and showering flowers on Radha and Krishna. <laughs> So in this way, Radhika was coronated as the queen of Vrindavan, and now that pastime will manifest before our eyes as all the dasis of Radharani very, very proudly perform the Raj Abhishek of Radharani now. Uh, now you enter the Lila Pravesh. <laughs> 